Good morning, I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines. Sunny weather makes Florida a hot spot for skin cancer. With rates higher than the national average, WMNS Chris Young speaks with a Florida doctor about the importance of skin safety and getting screened. Dr. Vernon Sondak is the chair of the Department of Cutaneous Oncology at Moffitt Cancer Center. Well, we love Florida because it's sunny and because the weather is beautiful. And we don't want to be living entirely indoors and in the dark. But what we do want to be is careful. Most skin cancers are caused by too much exposure to UV rays. Although the highest risk is for people with fair skin or who burn easily, Sondak says skin cancer can affect all skin tones in different ways. It does look very different in darker skinned uh, people. Um, In particular, we see more of the melanomas in darker skinned people occurring on their palms and soles or under the nails where they don't have as much pigmentation. You can reduce your risk of skin cancer by wearing sun protective clothing and sunscreen. Also, Dr. Sondak says people need to get screened. If we can detect them early, even the most serious kinds of skin cancer like melanoma, if we detect them early enough, We can remove them in a little procedure with local anesthesia. Person comes in, goes home in a few minutes. Moffitt Cancer Center will be hosting a free screening from 10 to 11 a.m. in Channelside on July 11th and at Clearwater's Pier 60 from 9 to 3.30 p.m. on July 29th. For WMNF News, I'm Chris Young in Tampa. You can hear more information about screenings on our website, wmnf.org slash news. Last night, just before 11 p.m., Tampa Fire Rescue crews were dispatched to a fire at a lessee bakery located on West Cypress Street. Upon arrival, firefighters found fire emanating from the back outside the refrigerator-freezer area of the establishment. Firefighters extinguished the fire and prevented it from spreading to the primary portion of the business. The building was unoccupied at the time of the fire, and there were no injuries. The Tampa Fire Marshal's office is currently investigating the cause. Industry groups and the Florida Agency for Healthcare Administration have agreed to end a legal fight about part of last year's state budget that could have opened Medicaid providers to litigation if they didn't pay $15 an hour minimum wage to direct care workers. Attorneys for the Florida Ambulance Association, the Florida Assisted Living Association, and two other plaintiffs and the Agency for Healthcare Administration last week filed a joint motion in Leon County Circuit Court to dismiss the case. The motion said a new state budget that took effect July 1st did not include the disputed issue. Last week's motion to dismiss the case indicated the budget fine print had not led to lawsuits. The Florida Supreme Court will hear arguments later this summer in a case challenging the state's 2022 abortion ban, which bars the procedure after 15 weeks of pregnancy. WLRN's Veronica Zaragovia reports on the legal back and forth that will also affect this year's newer six-week ban that's also on hold. Florida's Constitution has a privacy clause that protects people from governmental intrusion into their private lives. Since 1989, the state Supreme Court has used that clause to protect abortion rights. Now, the state wants the court to let the legislature regulate abortion access instead. Last year, a circuit court judge temporarily blocked the 15-week abortion ban. An appeals court disagreed and reinstated the law. If the mostly conservative court decides the privacy clause does not protect abortion rights, a stricter near-total ban, which outlaws abortions after six weeks, may go into effect. The court will hear arguments on September 8th. I'm Veronica Saragovia in Miami. A U.S. district judge has rejected a lawsuit alleging that a Florida voter registration form violates federal law because it doesn't properly inform convicted felons about their eligibility to vote. Margie Menzel has details. On Monday, Judge Alan Windsor dismissed a lawsuit filed in April by the League of Women Voters of Florida and the NAACP against Secretary of State Cord Byrd. The case stemmed partly from a 2018 constitutional amendment designed to restore the voting rights of felons who had completed their sentences. The plaintiffs argued that the state voter registration form violates the Federal National Voter Registration Act because it doesn't properly inform potential voters of eligibility requirements. 
That's resulted in high-profile arrests of felons who thought they had regained their voting rights, according to attorneys representing the plaintiffs. But Windsor ruled that the form accurately informs felons that they can't register to vote until their rights are restored. For WFSU News, I'm Marty Menzel. Saharan dust clouds are headed toward central Florida this week, bringing with them lower chances of thunderstorms. They're also going to bring spectacular sunrises and sunsets. WMFE's Danielle Pryor reports. The Saharan dust clouds will most likely reach central Florida by the end of this week. Meteorologist Rob Eicher says the dust clouds will decrease our area's chances of rainstorms, which will continue the trend of record-breaking heat. So if you don't get afternoon showers and thunderstorms, it gets really hot. Um, And it looks like we're still going to get afternoon showers and thunderstorms later part of the week, talking Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, But they may not form until really late in the day, so 7, 8 o'clock at night. So at that point, the damage is already done. It's already warmed up to 95, 96 degrees. Iker says the good news is that the Saharan dust protects us from hurricanes and brings dynamic sunsets and sunrises. In Orlando, I'm Danielle Pryor. It's hot and cloudy in the Tampa Bay area. Slightly cooler weather today with highs in the mid-80s, overnight lows in the upper 70s, possible thunderstorms after 8 o'clock today.